What if I told you that that piece of pink granite you picked up on a hike last summer was once magma deep underground? Or that it possibly could have been sediments at the bottom of a deep ocean millions of years ago? There are so many possibilities of what a rock could have been in the past and what it will be in the future, and this is because of the rock cycle. There are three main types of rocks on the planet, sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. Some of these rocks have undergone all parts of the rock cycle, while some have only experienced one or two. The rock cycle is how we understand how rocks get from one phase to another through many different geologic processes. So in this video, I'm going to use chocolate to simply explain the rock cycle in a fun, hands-on way. So let's go make some rocks. So I bought a few types of chocolate. I used some dark chocolate, milk chocolate, white chocolate. Um, I even had some chocolate that looked like mountains. This adds a little bit of variety to the mix, much like how different types of rocks add variety to the Earth's crust. You'll see how helpful it was for me to have variety later when I make them into rocks. So I started out by breaking them up into smaller pieces to simulate the geologic process of weathering. Any rock can be weathered into smaller pieces of rock and eventually sediment, although some rocks are more resistant to this than others. You can see that with the different types of chocolate as well. Some of the chocolate is softer and easier for me to break down while others are more difficult. There is physical weathering, chemical weathering, and biological weathering. What I'm showing here is supposed to simulate the general act of weathering, although it would likely simulate closest to physical weathering, since I am mechanically breaking up the chocolate with my hands, a knife, and a cheese grater. At the end, I had a bunch of different sizes of chocolate pieces all mixed together, and this also represents erosion, the act of removing the broken down pieces from the rock. So the sediment is removed from the rock by erosion, and then it's transported by forces like wind or water, and deposited somewhere new. Once deposited, sediment eventually gets compacted and cemented together to form a solid rock, a sedimentary rock. This happens through the pressure of other layers of rock and sediment on top of it, or burial. I tried to simulate this by using a flower press I had lying around, but you could also put the chocolate in a layer between two pieces of parchment paper and put something heavy on it for a while. I left the flower press for about 45 minutes before my curiosity got the best of me and I opened it up. The entire layer wasn't compact enough to be in one piece, but I did find a few nice pieces that had solidified together into clumps that resembled conglomerate. If I had broken down the chocolate into smaller pieces, I may have gotten a slightly better result, so if you try this, maybe try it this way and also another batch with smaller, more uniform pieces. Moving on to the next part of the rock cycle, we have metamorphism. Metamorphism is the process of an existing rock undergoing heat and or pressure that turns it into a different type of rock. I put a bunch of the chocolate pieces into a silicone bag and then I put that bag in a bowl of hot water. These chocolate pieces are supposed to represent an existing solid rock by the way, not just sediment. So I flipped the bag over after a minute or so in the hot water and it was already softening up so I squeezed the chocolate around in the bag a little bit to simulate the pressure aspect of things. Then I dumped it all out on some freezer paper. You can already see a difference from the sedimentary rock I made before this one. I wrapped it up and I squeezed it a little bit more to show how the chocolate was soft enough to morph together as I pressed down. Notice how the chocolate isn't quite melted, just a little softer so that I can push the pieces together when I apply pressure. Compare this to the recrystallization of minerals and deformation like foliation and folding in metamorphic rocks. I put that in the freezer for about an hour and when I took it out, I broke it open and got a pretty cool result. When you look closely, you can see that the rock is one piece and doesn't fall apart as easily as the sedimentary rock that I made. However, you can still identify different parts of the different chocolates. You can see the white chocolate still surrounding pretzel pieces, chunks of dark chocolate and white chocolate surrounded by morphed milk chocolate. Let's see how different it looks when we melt the chocolate instead. Next up in the rock cycle, we are going to show how any type of existing rock can become magma and then an igneous rock. I put a pot of water on medium to low heat and I put a Pyrex bowl with chocolate pieces inside. This is to simulate the process of turning rock, any type of rock, into magma. Rock gets pushed deep underground and through different processes melts into molten rock. This can occur because of heat, 
decompression or addition of volatiles like water, which lower the melting point of minerals in the rocks. The minerals within rocks have different melting points, so some melt at certain conditions while others are a little bit tougher. You can compare this to the almonds and the pretzels that remain solid while the rest of the chocolate softens. I poured the mixture onto some parchment paper and I put that in the freezer for about an hour so it could solidify. This represents the crystallization of magma in the Earth's crust as it cools. It could also represent the cooling of lava at the surface. When it was solid, I took it out of the freezer and broke it apart to see the results. You can see some similarities here to the metamorphic rock, but the chocolate is mostly the same color here. The main visible aspects of this are the chocolate and the solid non-chocolate pieces like pretzels and almonds. There's also no longer white chocolate covering the pretzel pieces, and you can't see separate pieces of dark chocolate and white chocolate. It's all kind of just one big chunk of chocolate now. There are even some vesicles in there, which are very fitting for an igneous rock. Here's another clip of the metamorphic rock for comparison. At this point in the rock cycle, anything can happen. The igneous rock could be turned into a metamorphic rock, melted again into magma, or uplifted to the surface and weathered into sediments all over again. The metamorphic rock can be melted and turned into an igneous rock, put under more heat and pressure to become a different type of metamorphic rock, or uplifted and weathered as well. It could take millions of years for any one step of the rock cycle to occur, and some rocks may never see more than one or two stages of the cycle. But anything is possible with an abundance of time and the constant promise of geologic processes on our planet. I hope this helped you better understand the rock cycle and thanks for watching.